is up all my Dorks, Nerds, Geeks, and Gamers. It's your host, Ghost, here, and you're, and you're watching a brand new episode of Dorks in Movie Minute. Today we're going to be discussing um, and reviewing uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi episodes 1 and 2. Um, I do got to say that I, I, before we even get started, I love this series. Um, out of all these Star Wars series we've gotten so far, they've all felt a little bit cheesy, a little bit too Disney-fied, and a little bit more following the formula of the, uh, the newer Star Wars movies, not the older ones. Um, and by older ones, I don't mean the classic ones, I mean the prequel series uh, that they've basically ignored since they bought Lucasfilms in the beginning. Um, so yeah, but now that's all getting fixed. We're finally getting to see a little bit more of that prequel stuff being brought into the Disney formula. And with Obi-Wan Kenobi, they are doing it 100% correctly, uh, the way I think they should be doing it. Now, I understand why fans may have a problem with this series, because they are retconning a lot of stuff. Uh, for example, one thing that the, the series did that, that blew me away that I loved seeing was seeing a young Princess Leia. That was one thing I've always wondered about in the Star Wars lore and universe. Um, they always focused on Luke. We saw Luke's upbringing. We know where he came from. We know what kind of character he is. But we only saw Leia when they brought her in at the beginning of A New Hope. Uh, so that is the only time we saw her and the only backstory we got was, oh yeah, you guys are brothers and sisters. Obi-Wan knew but never said anything. Why? Why did he not say nothing? Now we're seeing why. He actually, while he was watching Luke, he actually has to go on this adventure to protect Leia uh, from the Inquisitors who are actually looking for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And it's a whole mess of just different thread lines that are all going to come together uh, for a cohesive finale, hopefully. But I do got to say, this is ten times better than the Book of Boba Fett ever was any episode, including the Mandalorian episodes. Uh, because that wasn't really fair. They had two Mandalorian episodes in the Book of Boba Fett, uh, Boba Fett, and then tried saying that this, these were Boba Fett episodes. No, no, no. Those are Mandalorian Season 2.5 episodes that you threw in uh, at the end of the season because you didn't have enough content for a Book of Boba Fett season. Uh, so yeah, that's just what I think about it. Uh, but yeah, focusing on uh, Princess Leia as a child, it was very cool to see. And also seeing Obi-Wan Kenobi in these two episodes uh, being alone, being weak, kind of doing what Luke and Yoda kind of does, is what all Jedis do, is when they fight, feel weak and they fight, feel alone, uh, they kind of go to seclusion and they kind of think and they gotta meditate and they gotta really find themselves again. Um, and I don't, I don't think everyone's like, oh, all these Jedis do the same thing, they run away from their problems and hide. Well, no, they're not running away from their problems. The, the thing is, the Jedi believe that the Force will show them the way. Um, so they go home and they meditate and they wait for the Force to give them the right feeling, the right direction to go in. Um, and usually that leads to a brand new adventure. In this case, it does uh, with the Inquisitors coming to town um, looking for Obi-Wan Kenobi or any, any Jedi to kill. Um, so they just happen to run into Obi-Wan Kenobi's town. Uh, so yeah, that's the catalyst that usually pushes these Star Wars stories forward. Um, so yeah, very cool to see these Inquisitors. Also, the Inquisitor returns from Star Wars uh, Rebels, uh, which was very awesome to see. Even though he doesn't act like himself in this movie at all, or in this series at all, um, but we do get to see an another new character, this third sister character, uh, who is obsessed with Obi-Wan Kenobi and trying to find him and kill him for whatever reason. My guess is going to be, I, I'm, I'm very strong on this uh, theory as well, that she is one of the younglings that did survive. Um, and if not, then I think that she saw Obi-Wan Kenobi running away in that fight and getting away and retreating instead of saving younglings. And I think that's why she's going to be wanting to go after Obi-Wan Kenobi so hard. Uh, that's just a very, very early theory for these first two episodes. Uh, but yeah, that's just what I think. So the story ends up taking Obi-Wan Kenobi out of his home planet um, into Princess Leia's planet where he is asked by her father. Uh, who returns, the actor from the original prequel series, returns to play her father, her adapted father in this series again. Um, and he basically begs Obi-Wan Kenobi to come help protect uh, Princess Leia from these Inquisitors and everything that's going on. Uh, so he, agree he agrees, and that's how this, this adventure starts in these, in these first two episodes. Uh, these first two episodes do take a little bit of time to get rolling and really set up the story, but I really like the direction they're headed after these first two episodes. Uh, another cool thing I, did, I do want to mention is we did get to see a stormtrooper played by the actual guy who, who modeled the stormtroopers in the, in the animated series. Uh, so I'm glad he's back and I'm glad he's actually wearing real uh, clone trooper armor. It was very cool to see. 
Uh, but yeah, that's just my thoughts, guys. Now time for a final score. I give these two first two episodes a 9 out of 10, both of them. Uh, They're both very, very good. The only issue I had is some slight pacing issues where it got a little bit boring, uh, slightly boring in a couple scenes. Um, but other than that, very, very strong episodes, and I cannot wait to see where episodes 3 and 4 go. Or, uh, 3 and 4 go. Or, 3 and 4 go, and episodes 5 and 6 go, and, and what kind of story they're telling for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And not just Obi-Wan Kenobi, I'm, I'm dying to learn more about Princess Leia and Luke as children, um, and see how, how why Obi-Wan did not tell either of them about the secrets of the other. Uh, that's just my thoughts, guys. Let me know down below what you guys thought of Obi-Wan Kenobi, episodes 1 and 2. Uh, did you enjoy this series as much as I am? And is there something you would have changed if you were in control of this series? Let me know down below. Make sure you like, subscribe, or share. And as always, guys, keep it right here on Norkston. I've been your host, Ghost. Adios.